Hello and welcome back to the Common Cult Podcast, a Colts podcast with real takes and no clickbait. I'm Josh Hudgens, joined by Dan Hertzler. Dan, how's it going? I'm doing good. I'm doing good for uh, the Colt Nation. This is a big week for us. Oh, yeah. It's draft nerd time, you know, where we, uh, you know, start looking at all these 40s and these guys running t-shirts and t-shirts and shorts and uh, interviews and all these things. But hey, we got to pay attention to it because this is a huge offseason, not just for the very, very top uh, of what we do, but for the whole draft. Yeah. Colts need need a whole kind of influx of offense and defensive young players. And so if you're a draft nerd out there, this is your episode. If you're not, we're going to we're going to ease you into it. We're going to get you excited about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, so obviously this is our first official Colts mock draft pre-NFL combine. Um, we're not going to waste a whole lot of time. We're going to get right into this thing, but before we do, please make sure to subscribe to our channel. We're very close to 1000. It would mean a lot if you do. So um, let's go ahead. Let's start. Colts pick first sure. round 1.4. We're not predicting any trades here because you can no. get crazy if you start doing all that. We got CJ Stroud, quarterback out of yeah. Ohio State. The guy is, uh, he seems like he's got all the tools. Uh, a little struggles under pressure a little bit is what, what they say about him. But overall, uh, yeah. I think that is our chance to get our quarterback of the future. We're going to hammer this quarterback so much on the show over the next few days. I don't think yeah. we want to spend too much time on this pick, but. But, um, Dan, you have anything to say about that? No, just like you said, I mean, quarterbacks are going to get all the attention, and we'll, we'll spend a lot of time talking about that. We, we just wanted to give you kind of an overview of some other positions as well, too, things that maybe some names you can start paying attention to when you start watching the combine this co- upcoming weekend. Uh, and so C.J. Strauss, obviously a big name. He's not going to throw. He's probably not going to do much there. But uh, Colts do have a second-round pick. And uh, we both kind of agree a little bit on at least the position wise. We think they need some kind of playmaker receiver and I'm looking for a slot. And I really like this kid out of Houston, uh, Nathaniel Dell. Uh, He just looks like he fits the role and the mold of a, of a slot guy. That's kind of shifty playmaker guy. Uh, Josh, what do you think about that? You think the Colts need to go receiver? Yeah, I like the receiver position. I think that obviously you have Michael Pittman and Alec Pierce, and then you don't really have anybody to tell you the truth. So, you, you take a you take a guy who can get in the slot, kind of a role that Naheem Hines was playing at times for the Colts last year, which yeah. shows their faith in their receivers. Uh, I, I like yeah. I like picking a receiver. This is a spot where I wouldn't even mind the Colts trading back five or six picks and and kind of yeah. getting getting some more capital at the end of the draft and and still getting a receiver here um, in the second round. I, I like that pick. Yeah, you love the idea of getting your quarterback and maybe getting a receiver that can go with them. You got to get weapons there. Hey, and then third round, uh, another area I think the Colts need to really address is that left tackle. I don't think you're going to get a guy that you can plug in, obviously, in the third round, but uh, yeah. pay attention to Blake Freeland out of BYU. He's got all the right sizes, all the right measurements, got to work on technique. There's some questions there. You need to get coached up. Uh, but I think left tackle, I think a tackle in general is an area that the Colts need to address. Yeah, the interesting thing about the Colts offensive line is the highest paid offensive line in the NFL last year. Um, there has been a few theories I was looking at with Braden Smith maybe shifting him around and maybe uh, mm-hmm. playing around with our tackles a little bit. Obviously, we had mm-hmm. a rookie last year uh, who who really turned it on late in the season. but. We'd be fooling ourselves if we said the Colts couldn't use offensive line help. Yeah. I think I think taking an offensive lineman in the first three rounds is a must. Maybe you even swap the tackle and the receiver. Uh, but yep. I, I like this pick. Hey, uh, moving into fourth round, we're starting to get into what, that mid round range. You got to take some flyers a little bit. Got to gamble a little bit. I think again, Colts looking at their team. I think they got to get younger and the defensive side as well too. It just can't be all offense. First three were offense. Yeah. Now I'm going defense cornerback position there's a kid from tcu uh, i'm gonna have to work on his name trevavius or, or uh, travis hodges tomlinson same bloodline as ladanian tomlinson i love that i'm a sucker for that kind of stuff uh this kid's got all the physical tools again uh and, and i think it's something to look at as far as just getting a little bit younger in that secondary what do you think about moving on the defensive side for round four i i think we have some holes on defense i would i think i would rather and, and dan put together this mock draft so if you hate it yep. blame the guy on the right the guy on the right there i mean that blame him 100 percent uh for me i would like to have seen a defensive end personally here but uh, are you are you telling me there's one coming yeah, yeah, yeah. Just wait. We got two in the fifth. Two in the fifth. Wait on that. So, yeah, I, I mean, I like the pick. I, it, you know, once you get in fourth, fifth, sixth round, we're, we're shooting yeah. flyers. This is a pre-combine draft. But what I do like is the guy, uh, he played nearly 2,500 snaps for TCU. Um, 
and the career quarterback rating for the other guys, uh, for the quarterbacks who targeted him, had a 56 QBR. So he, he's playing good cornerback despite being a smaller guy. Yeah. And again, like you said, and, and what we're going to look at, this is going to move around, but it, it gives us something to think about, something to, to think positionally wise, but then some names thrown out there. Yeah. And so you mentioned the edge. I, we both agree they need an edge in here. I kind of waited to the fifth round. They got two fifth round picks. Uh, there's an edge uh, kind of out of a mid-major, Bowling Green, Carl Brooks. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big believer that you can find some of these gems in these mid or mid-majors, and edge is a, is a one where you can find that. This guy, again, uh, great size, uh, is, is just known getting off the blocker. Uh, again, uh, just what can he do against the big-level talent? That's kind of what we got to see, uh, but he's worth the risk. And then there's another guy with their second fifth, I'm really excited about this kid. Uh, he's a wide receiver out of BYU. I, I, it's, it's like Puka uh, Nukas or something like that. Again, I, I'm not pronouncing it nearly close to what it is. Uh, if the Colts draft them, we'll figure that out. But this guy's been hurt. But again, he, he's got some of these these intangibles. And, and when you're picking in the fifth round, it's almost like you got to get some of these guys that they might have character issues. They might come off injuries. They might, you know have a reason why they didn't quite produce that's why they dropped to the fifth round you're not you're not getting the best guy in the fifth round but this guy man i i, I think if he can be healthy uh he's another weapon and and the receiver is a, definitely a, a position of need that they got to go after in this draft yeah i think the interesting thing about the colts and ballard he hasn't been afraid to take guys who are injured actually in the draft I mean, yep. you look at deo who who uh was injured when he took him i think nick cross was coming off of an injury uh, when yeah. the Colts took him. Um, so, I mean, I, I like that pick. It's a flyer. It's a shot in the dark. And yep. I think that's where we're going to stop is the fifth round. We obviously have a few more picks, but this is this obviously it's, the whole thing's a shot in the dark. But when you when you get to round five, six, and seven, uh, it gets really, really dark. Yep. So um, that, I think that's, that's kind of how we would see the mock draft playing out. Obviously, receiver help offensive line help and, and getting our star quarterback would, would, uh, would be nice, but yeah. um, that, that's kind of what we think. We're going to watch this combine. We're going to see who stands out. We're going to tweak this thing and, and kind of hopefully get this thing finalized as we get closer to draft time. Yeah. And again, I would just encourage you, uh, you know, I think what we said, our receiver, uh, tackle edge cornerback to us, that's kind of the positions that they might be looking for. It doesn't mean they're going to pass up on best available player and someone else might stand out. But uh, I think the Colts uh, have to come out of this draft with uh, uh, one or two receivers, an offensive lineman, uh, an edge rusher, and maybe someone in the secondary. It, it sounds pretty basic, but that's the way the NFL is. And uh, as you're watching this combine, uh, hopefully you pick up some names and uh, we'll do another mock, but maybe there's someone we're missing. Hey, uh, put them in the comments. Tell us, hey, you've been watching this guy or you've been seeing him play or yeah. this is a perfect kind of sleeper. I mean, that's kind of the fun of all this. And uh, we'd love to pick up on some of those names and we'll do our best to, to find out who they are. Yeah, guys, let us know what you think. Make sure to subscribe, comment what you think, who you think the Colts should draft, and, and uh, we'll, we'll take a look at them. And until next time, Thanks for watching the Common Cult Podcast.